Thanks for joining me. This is the first of three videos where I'm going to walk through how to build an index in Microsoft Word. Now most large documents will have a table of contents at the beginning and an index at the end. The table of contents is very general. The reader generally runs their finger down the list of topics. When they find something that interests them, they'll find the page number, go to that page and start reading. But the index, like the one we see here, is much more specific. People go to the index with something in mind and they're looking for a particular page number or a series of page numbers that covers that particular topic. Most indexes are arranged alphabetically, which just makes it a lot easier to search and find what you're looking for. So in this video, I'm going to show you a two-step process called mark and index. Firstly, you go through the document and mark all the stuff that you want to see in the index. And then secondly, you build your index. You can also group related items together and cross-reference other indexed items. So like down here, we have console with three sub-entries under the main entry. Over here, next to Pocket Monsters, it says see Pokemon, because they're basically referring to the same thing. So if somebody's searching for Pocket Monsters, you can just collect it all under the same heading of Pokemon. It's the same thing. Now, if I just scroll up to the main sample document here, there's a whole bunch of text here. Now behind the scenes, there's some hidden information called field codes, which is what Word uses to build the index. Now, if I just turn on the hidden formatting here, it suddenly becomes very messy. So all these different entries that have been marked, these are the things that appear in the index. So you get a whole bunch of these curly braces, curly brackets. So the document is littered with these braces, these curly brackets, each of which contains this XE entry, stands for index entry, followed by the thing that's gonna appear in the index. And as you go down the document, you can see there's lots of these. Now you might get to the stage where things become a bit unmanageable, especially if it's been through a few different sets of hands, people have done their own thing, and it's very hard to track what's been indexed and what hasn't. So towards the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to clean this up in one foul swoop. It's not hard, but it requires an option that's a little bit hidden away. So that's the plan. Let me switch to a clean document. It's always good to start with the end in mind. It's good to know where you're heading. But now here's a clean document, just plain text, if I turn on the hidden formatting again, you can see there's none of those field codes that we saw just a moment ago. If I scroll through, you can see that this text is only like a page and a bit long. And a bit further down on page three, you can see the index heading is ready to go. And underneath that, I'm gonna build the index from scratch. So back at the top, you can see that a few of these words, a few of these phrases are color coded. Each of the colors represents a different feature that I'm gonna show you. The first thing I'm gonna select is the name of this guy down here. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it. He's the creator. Next, we go to references at the top here. Across in the index section, we're gonna choose mark entry. Now you can see if I hover over that, the shortcut key there, which is well worth remembering if you're gonna use this feature a lot, is Alt Shift X. So let's click on this and the mark index entry box is displayed. Now you can actually leave this box open and switch between the document and this dialogue. So you don't have to keep closing it every time for every entry that you wanna mark. As you can see, it's put the name in the main entry, and that's all we wanna do at this stage. Down the bottom, there's two buttons, mark and mark all. Mark will just mark the one occurrence on this particular page, and so in the index, there'll only be one page number for this item. But if this occurred several times throughout the document, and I clicked mark all, in the index, it might say that this appears on page one, page three, page 17, page 22, whatever the page numbers are, and however many times it appears, it'll show all the page numbers that are relevant. So generally, you wanna choose mark all. So let's do that now. Now, let's take a look at what I've just marked. Here's the name. Straight after, we have this thing, the braces, which are the curly brackets, XE, which I said before is index entry. This is what's called a field code. And then the bidding quotes, that's what's gonna appear in the index. So let's go through and do a couple more. Pokemon trainers here. Again, go back to the mark index entry box and click Mark All. Now when you have two windows open, two active windows, one being the dialogue, one being the document, you have to click, you first have to click on the object that you wanna give the focus to. So at the moment, my focus is on the Mark Index Entry box. So to go back to the document, I've first of all gotta click the document and then select the next thing on the document. Likewise, going from the document to this dialogue box, I've gotta click once on the dialogue box here and then choose one of these buttons here. A lot of people get very confused, a bit frustrated by that, but it's a general thing, a general principle that runs through all the programs. So one final one here, click back on the document, scroll down to the bottom or the top of the second page actually, and this Pikachu in green as well, select it, 
click on the dialog Markle. That's the process. Now, every time I mark all, it's going to include an index entry for that item. If an item has several occurrences on one page, it only marks the first one. Because when you think about it, in an index, all you want is a page number. So it doesn't have to mark every single one on a page. Just one is sufficient. So don't be confused by that. Just look for the first one. The marked entry will be on that one. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a cross-reference to another indexed item. So I flip back on the document. Let's scroll back to the top. Now, the first sentence says, Pokemon, also known as Pocket Monsters. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to highlight Pokemon, go back to the dialog and mark all. So every occurrence of Pokemon, or at least one per page, now has a field code and will appear in the index. So let's select Pocket Monsters, click back in the dialog, and as you can see, as for everything else, is put Pocket Monsters into the main entry box. However, what we're going to do here is whenever somebody searches for Pocket Monsters, we're going to redirect them to the Pokemon entry, which will be exactly the same topic, and Pokemon already has its own set of page numbers. So all we do is to select cross-reference here, and after the word C, we put Pokemon. And then just like before, we choose either Mark or Mark All. It just so happens there's only one occurrence of Pocket Monsters here, so Mark is the only button offered, Mark All is deactivated. Now, moving to a different color. And towards the top here, we have two words called Franchise, one with a capital F and one with a lowercase f, these two here. Indexing is case sensitive. So whatever you mark, that's what's going to appear in exactly the same case in the index. If you only marked the franchises with a lowercase f, any franchise that had a capital F would not be marked. And that highlights one of the weaknesses of just choosing mark and index, as opposed to the concordance method, which I'm gonna cover in the next video in this series you'll find the concordance method is a lot more forgiving and a lot more flexible. Anyway, just to prove the point, if I highlight franchise here, go across to the dialog box and click again, and then mark all, you can see that franchise here, franchise down there, franchise all the way through, where it's got a lowercase f, has been marked, but it hasn't marked this occurrence with a capital F. So that needs to be done separately. Let's move on to the next color. We have some blue words here, one which says Game Boy. A bit further down, we'll see that again, Game Boy, 3DS and Switch a bit further down here. These are the names of three different game consoles that have come out over the last 20 years or so. So I'm going to group these three names under one entry called console. Here's how this works. Firstly, you select the text, then you come and click on the dialog again. And as before, it's put Game Boy in the main entry. Now we're actually going to move this down into the sub entry. And in the main entry, we're going to type console. And then as before, mark all. You can see the marked entries here. Next we have 3DS. Highlight the text, click back on the dialog box, just wipe this out. I'm going to type console and then 3DS underneath. Again, mark all. Finally, the switch. So let's highlight the text, click back in the dialog. In the main entry, type console and in the sub entry, type switch. And again, mark all. Now as we've gone through and marked these entries, you may have noticed that the formatting of the text here just picks up exactly how it is in the document. And when you come to build your index, initially it's going to put that same formatting on the index. So the third video in this set of three is going to show you how to tidy up that formatting. They're all connected to styles, and there's particular styles that are used to control the index formatting. So now that we've marked all the entries we want to include in the index, let's close this dialog. Let's scroll down to the bottom and pull ourselves under the index heading. And here's part two of the process. So again, on references in the index group, this time I'm gonna choose insert index. A separate dialog comes up. If you've ever done tables of contents, you'll recognize this, it's very familiar. It actually works on exactly the same format, the same kind of structure. Now, when you're using this method of marking and then building the index, you don't need to worry about these three buttons down here. That'll come into play when you do the concordance method. Now, just like tables of contents, it's best to start at the bottom and work your way up and to the right. If you start at the top and work your way downwards, depending on what you choose here, it changes the default settings below. So you do only work twice. Anyway, formats from template is the standard format. There's a number of different choices in here. And if you look at the preview, this is how each one is gonna look. So you can play around with that in your own time. Just choose one and move on. Depending on what you choose here, it'll set these two things differently. Now it makes sense to right align the page numbers. 
as we can see in a preview, nice and neat. Just keep it like that. Don't untick it. Tab leader, some of the options here, turn the tab leader off. The tab leader is what connects the item with the page number. And when you've got a busy page, that's well worth keeping. So you need a tab leader. Now in the top right corner, these can be changed according to your preferences. Again, watch the preview as we change each of these. Indented is the default setting. If I change that to running, it changes the appearance slightly. I don't like it. Some people use it. That's up to you. So let's change that back to indented here. The columns says, how many columns do you want to divide your index into? Two is quite a nice balance, but if you find that most of your index entries are like single words or very short entries, you might decide to up that to three columns across a page. It's entirely up to you. You can experiment. You can always come back here and change it as well. Language, just leave that as it is. So with all that done, let's click OK, and the index builds itself based on all of your marked entries. Just like a table of contents, if you click somewhere on the index, you'll see that gray shading behind all the text. And that indicates that Word controls everything for you. You don't need to worry about modifying and updating this yourself. Word will take care of it for you. As you add more marked entries later, they'll be included automatically in this index when you refresh it. So let's do a couple of quick changes. Let me go back towards the document. I'm gonna pick a random word, maybe Japan here. Select it, Alt Shift X to display the dialog box. And again, mark all. So when we go back to the index in just a moment, Japan is gonna get added. Also what I'm gonna do is to go up a little bit further and just for the sake of it, position at the beginning of a paragraph, control enter to put a page break in there. And let's come down a bit further down and do one more of those. So basically the page numbers of existing index entries are gonna change, hopefully. So let's go back down to the index, click on the index. Now you can either press F9 and there's the updated index. You can see that Japan is now included and the page numbers have adapted. Now, if you can't remember F9, depending on your keyboard layout, it might be Fn or function F9. Lots of keyboards these days use reverse sets of function keys. So if F9 doesn't work, try Fn F9. Alternatively, you can right click anywhere on the index and there'll be an option to update the field on the menu. And lastly, up in the index group, update index is now active, which wasn't before, but because we're now currently on the index, that is now an active option that we could use if we wanted to. So any of those three methods are fine to use to update the index. In the next video in this little series, I wanna show you how to build an index using a concordance file. It's much more flexible and it allows you to see in an instant what's being indexed currently. And if you want to add to it, remove from it, whatever, it becomes very easy to do that. The third video in this little series, I wanna show you how to take care of the formatting of this index because as you can see, it's pulled the formatting through exactly as it was in the document. How do you control that properly? So there you go. I hope you found that useful. If it was, click the thumbs up underneath this video and leave a comment just to let me know. I receive every single comment myself and I'll respond to every single comment that comes through. I'm not anonymous. I like a bit of interaction. Also, if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified of any new videos as they come out, click the bell as well and ask to be notified. But that is it from me from this video. I'll put a link to the other two videos, the next two parts of this little series in the notes underneath, and I'll see you for the next one.